Doctors write millions of prescriptions for this painkiller each year, and millions more packets are bought over the counter. It has generally been considered cheap, safe and effective, but should we think harder before we take another pill? In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen in the US, including its side effects, the FDA warnings, and how it compares to other pain relievers such as ibuprofen. So let's get started with what is paracetamol and how does it work? It's a common painkiller used to treat aches and pain by blocking the chemical messengers in the brain that tell your body that you have pain. It can also be used to reduce a high temperature by affecting the chemical messengers in an area of the brain that regulates body temperature. So who may not be able to take it? It's not suitable for some people. To make sure it's safe for you, tell your doctor or pharmacist if you have ever had an allergic reaction to paracetamol or any other medicine. If you have liver or kidney problems, if you regularly drink more than the maximum amount of alcohol recommended in the week. So what's the dose? Because it's available to buy from pharmacies or supermarkets, and it comes as tablets, capsules, syrup, powder that you mix with water or suppositories, we won't discuss all the individual doses here, but always follow the instructions on the medicine packet. You may be able to get a higher strength prescription from your doctor if you have long-term pain and if you weigh less than 50 kilograms or approximately 110 pounds, you may need to take a lower dose. And do remember that paracetamol is also available combined with other painkillers and anti-sickness medicines. It is used in a wide range of cold and flu remedies, which is extremely important to be aware of and we will discuss shortly. Just remember that the maximum daily dose of paracetamol is 4 grams in 24 hours. So how long does it take to work? Paracetamol can take up to an hour to work and it keeps on working for about 5 hours. So what are the side effects? Paracetamol is generally safe when taken at the recommended dose. And like with any medication, in rare cases, it's possible to have a serious allergic reaction. Now, everybody's body behaves differently to medication. So for a full list, I would see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. However, safety does have limits and there are risks of taking paracetamol. So here are four main issues of concern. One of the biggest concerns is its narrow margin of safety. The recommended daily limit is 4 grams in 24 hours, which is 8 of the 500 milligram tablets. But if you go even slightly over, just one extra gram, you can begin to damage your liver. So you go from a therapeutic dose to a toxic one. So let's talk about accidental overdose. So the risks aren't just from obvious overdoses, a lot of liver damage happens by accident. People combine cold remedies and painkillers without realizing they're doubling up on paracetamol. It's easy to do, and it's hard to notice until it's too late. And in the US, the FDA, the American Medicines Watchdog, even reduced the allowed amount of paracetamol per tablet to 325 milligrams, to lower the risk of accidental overdose. And what about the FDA warning about skin reactions? In 2013, the FDA issued warnings about rare but deadly skin reactions caused by paracetamol, including Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. I will leave a link to this drug safety update below. What about GI bleeding? Most people think stomach bleeding is a problem only with pain relievers like ibuprofen or aspirin, which are anti-inflammatory medicines and belong to a group of medicines called NSAIDs. But a 2011 study from Nottingham in the UK found that one in five people taking paracetamol for just 13 weeks lost a unit of blood internally, the same rate as those taking ibuprofen. Now, considering this, I would seek medical attention immediately if you are passing dark, sticky, tar-like stools. If you have a sudden, sharp pain in your tummy that gets steadily worse. If you are vomiting blood 
and the blood can appear bright red or have a dark brown, grainy appearance similar to coffee grounds. These could be a sign of a serious complication such as internal bleeding. And what about long-term use with paracetamol and organ damage? It's known that the risks grow over time, especially for long-term chronic users, people with arthritis or persistent back pain. Doctors have reported that paracetamol can cause gastrointestinal bleeding, liver strain and kidney damage, just like NSAIDs, sometimes even worse. I always recommend regular medication reviews with your healthcare provider, which should include a blood test. So how does paracetamol compare to ibuprofen? The type of medicine you need to treat your pain depends on what type of pain you have. Now, paracetamol and ibuprofen work in different ways. So paracetamol is better than ibuprofen for some types of pain. If you would like to learn more about ibuprofen, I will leave a link in the description box below. Paracetamol is usually best for most types of pain, including headaches and stomachache. Ibuprofen may be better for period pain or toothache. Some people find ibuprofen better than paracetamol for back pain. So while paracetamol remains widely used, its actual effectiveness is still very much up for debate. It might seem gentle and often is in small doses, but its safety depends entirely on how much, how often and what else you're taking with it. I do believe that sometimes the most familiar medicines are the ones we need to question the most. Now I hope you found this video helpful and please give it a like and share it with anyone who might benefit and don't forget to subscribe for new videos each week and feel free to leave a comment below to let me know what you found useful or what you'd like to learn more about. You can also explore my other videos and playlists for more health topics. Thank you so much for watching.